is the Glass Cannon Network. Welcome to Cannon Fodder, a behind the scenes look at the Glass Cannon Network. Yo, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to Cannon Fodder. It is Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. And I'm your old pal, Joe O'Brien, and I am Troyless today. There is no Troy joining me for Cannon Fodder. If you're hearing this, you might not know it, but if you're watching, you certainly can see I'm in the captain's chair. I'm at the, I'm at the studio today doing fodder. We kicked Troy out of here because today is a very important fodder. In the wake of the last episode of the Glass Cannon podcast, we felt we needed to have a bit of a house meeting, a bit of a player meeting, and it's happening live here today on the FOD. I am joined by all of the players of the Gatewalkers campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, Skit, Sid, Matthew, ah, and Kate. Ah, ah, you, you. Ah, 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 I know, ah, I know ah, you. Ah, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry, I got scared. It's weird because they're in different places. Um, yes. It's freaking me out. Only I'm in a different place. Yeah. Well, Joe and is not supposed to be there. And no one's here. Mm. No yeah, one no one's see. in the normal Kate seat. I am sitting in the normal Troy seat behind the GM screen. This is a nice view. Like this to get to see everybody with only turning your head about yeah. 20 degrees. Uh, that's nice. <laughs> Normally when Matthew like is having a great role play scene, it's just, you know, the whole time I got to <laughs> turn my head too much. That's why you and I never have role play scenes. <laughs> yeah, we really don't. It's like, you know, uh, and I'm going to walk up to Buggles. Because <laughs> like yeah. skids directly like across from right ahead in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, thank you guys for coming and hanging out. Uh, we are going to do, you know, we're going to get everybody caught up on the news uh, this week, of course, what's going on uh, with the network. Then we're going to dive into GCP, uh, Campaign 2, Episode 26, 25? I can't remember. 26. 26. Kate knows. Kate knows. I know. Kate knows. We're going to j- dive into GCP episode 26 and get right <laughs> to the hot topic. But first, oh, and then, of course, we are stupid. There's going to be some mistakes made, so we'll talk about that. And listener mail, we're going to talk to you guys and see what you want to talk about. We'll ask the players here. Let's kick it off with some news. There's a fun thing happening tonight. Some of you don't know about this. There's a really fun thing happening tonight that we've never done before. So as part of our rewards for the Vorpal membership of our new subscription service, we are doing a Talk Nerdy Town Hall. Now, we did a version of this last year where we would go on Discord and uh, you could hang out with Skid or myself or Matthew or Troy for about an hour and chat on Discord. And it was primarily uh, the, the uh, one of us would be talking uh, over a voice channel while everybody else was chatting. We recorded that and then would leave it there for everybody to listen to. Well, doing something a little different this week, as I start this kind of new uh, era of Talk Nerdy Town Hall on our new subscription service, I've decided to use the new Discord stages uh, technology with the help of my good buddy, McD, to try to make it more of like a talk show experience <laughs> where the audience can come to the stage and talk, almost like taking callers on a radio show, right? (laughs) So uh, we're going to try it out tonight, March 20th, 7.30 p.m. Eastern on Discord. You do have to be a Vorpal subscriber. So if you are a Vorpal member, please come by and hang out. If you're not, eh, maybe bump up, check it out, see if you like it. It's going to be Jared and myself hosting the show. We're going to be chatting about uh, some fun, generic nerd topics and taking calls from you calls from the audience. So we're going to test it out, see how it goes. That's tonight, 7.30 Eastern time. I mentioned it to Skid in passing. I hope you pop by. I, I am can stop real by. excited. <laughs> I, I can't wait for this. I'm kind of nervous because like, you know, it's, it's one thing when you're doing live fodder on Twitch and like people are chatting and you can kind of pick and choose what you want to talk about. Uh, but bring them up there. Let's see what they have to say. It's really, <laughs> it's working without a net. And you know who loves it? Jared Logan. Yeah, see, this is the best chance to do it is with jared because yeah. he will he's be- the funniest man ever yeah and you're gonna get lunatics up there <laughs> gonna, jared doesn't have time for that and jared will absolutely <laughs> shut it down and turn it into something turn into spin it into gold he's the <laughs> rumple stiltskin of the state <laughs> so i can't ex- i can't wait it's gonna be great yeah, i'm very excited for that uh moving on to merch this week after we did our toronto show we just got back from toronto phenomenal show by the way guys great job and great what job. a what a crowd thank you what oh, man 
my uh, God. What wow. a great goddamn show and time. <laughs> start, what a wonderful country. Tour. Yeah, what a great country. I am I, ready to renounce my citizenship I'm, right now. Whoa. I'm only sad one of us wasn't grievously injured so we could partake of the wonderful. I, that's the one thing we didn't get to really sink our teeth into was the healthcare system up yeah. there. McD was pretty convinced. He pinned it on universal health care as being the primary reason that no one moved with any alacrity to do anything. <laughs> he was just like, they just know they're going to live forever. So they don't care to get anything done. It's there's like no the, urgency. There's no sense of urgency, urgency in this country. It was surprisingly coming from like East Coast. You would think like that East Coast mentality just kind of travels up the line. But there is a real West Coast vibe in Toronto of like, People walking slow in the street. People taking their time and you know eating out. It was really nice. It was taking very the entire length of a visit at a restaurant to deliver Sydney's drink. Deliver my one. <laughs> drink deliver I a ordered single drink. When I sat down, and you know what? That's okay. I respect it. It's just confusing because the city is so similar to New York. Like it's this big sprawling metropolis of a city. These big modern skyscrapers. Like I didn't know what Toronto looked like, but then the people walk at 0.5 miles an hour, and I'm like, you don't have anywhere to go. You're not going to any of these buildings? Why are you out? It one like of those things. To walk that slow. It's just one of those things that's just like a little different. Yeah. Just and it's full. Canada's full of those things. And I <laughs> fucking love it. Yeah, it was amazing. And the food. Number, oh. I would say food number one amazing. on my list is the snacks. Snacks. So oh, I said this snacks. to those of you who are at the VIP, but I was like, I am flabbergasted at how good your snack game is. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, the snack game is incredible. We had an amazing uh, uh, listener who came to the live show and brought a case of Pringles. <laughs> Canadian Pringles. All Canadian Pringles. All dressed, ketchup. We had all of it. It was uh, so good. Oh, God. it was. Uh, we went to a snack store. Was that Friday night? Yeah. Yeah. Friday night. We were stopped. It was Toronto after dinner. equivalent of a bodega. Yeah. Exactly. It was after dinner. We, out, we went out, had some drinks. We're like walking back to the hotel, and we walked in. We're like, a little hungry. We had a little late night snack. A chip. Walked into this snack store and just couldn't stop ourselves. Just bought bags and bags of snacks and candy. They had French candy. We they spent had money like money didn't mean anything. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. in Canada. It doesn't. It was so, Canadian dollars. It's pretend yeah. money. Make money. <laughs> yeah. How All right. Well, also uh, uh, debuting at that show was the bird shirt. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The bird shirt dropped. And uh, people seemed to love it. I loved it. I thought it looked pretty awesome. I wore it on stage. And it is now available in the store. So if you want to check it out, it should be up there, as well as the OGGCP hat, which also came into Toronto. So they're both available in the web store. Check that out. Yeah, actually, out. Joe, my cousin Andrew, who you met, who came to the Jason Charles Miller. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just texting me about an hour ago saying, I can't wait to buy that bird shirt. Oh, amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's really cool. It looks like a, a metal band like logo that you can't read a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want one. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we don't say that about every piece of merch. I don't know everything we, I don't know yeah. everything we make. But uh, I, I really, I really want that one. There's another one. I'm trying to think. There was one for one of your uh, character. Oh, I think it was the the Gormley Fall one. Oh, I was yeah. like, I want. Was that, that Angelique? Show. Was that one of the Angelique ones? Uh, Angeline, yeah, I, th I believe, Angelique. yeah, I believe yeah. they did that. It's just like falling back. I love yeah, that shirt. Uh, oh yeah, remember it had the mosquito was like all on, on the, the neck. neckline, like on the collar. That yeah, was, yeah, that was oh. really dragonfly. Yeah, so sad. Dragonfly, right? Mosquito. So sad. That episode. Spoilers. Uh, spoilers. I mean, I listen to it. Spoilers for other people who haven't heard it. Uh, quick update on the tour as well. Austin VIP mm -hmm. is sold out. Oh, baby. It's done. Austin's doing a great job. Thank you so much, Austin. Kansas City, you're getting there. Still some VIPs available there. Uh, St. Paul has one VIP ticket left. So if you're going to St. Paul, literally, as of right now, there's one ticket left. You could be the one to get it. Grab it and uh, wrap that up for us. And then, uh, yeah, our next stop is Kansas City. So okay. looking forward to that. All right. Enough BS. Let's get in to the episode. This week's episode of the Glass Cannon Podcast was a continuation of a combat. We have not done that very often in Gatewalkers. It's been a lot of like, uh, let the episode go long to finish the encounter, you know, in most situations. This time, we carry it over because this Shea fight is particularly frustrating. This ability that the Shea has to jump away from us elongates the fight. The the Shea doesn't seem to do, put out a lot of damage, but is uh, it's a harrowing encounter because we can't quite lock it down. And uh, during that fight, there was a whole there was a great deal of concealment involved. Well, let me say quickly 
what Troy told us after the episode about that Shay. So he he sort of spilled the beans on the ability because we were so frustrated by the end. We were like, what the hell was that Shay doing? Tell us what it does. It just tell us what it does. We failed every recall knowledge check. We did. I knew what it did. Kate knew, yeah. Kate knew what it did. I she, guessed it on air. Yeah. You're pretty close. Oh, she yeah. did pretty close to guess it, it exactly. on air. Yeah. She got it exactly on air. I got it exactly on air. I was like, I bet you it's this. But wow. did, you didn't get the two reactions thing. Well, sorry, I'm, I'm jumping Joe's boat, but I feel like no, none, yeah. of us, none of us understood that part. Of All right, it. let me summarize it really quickly. I did. The, uh, I did get that. <laughs> I believe it. Kate is ready, <laughs> and it's awesome. This is my first reunion. <laughs> <laughs> this really is. This is GCP episode 26 reunion. <laughs> So the way the ability worked from my understanding, I don't have the book here in front of me, unfortunately, is that the, the Shay could, as an action, mm -mm. Yeah. or two actions. As a reaction. Two no, 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 as an action. Oh. She could prepare. She could prepare yes. the stance, and that gave her two reactions in a round. She could use up to two reactions in a round. Otherwise, and, she got one. And her reaction, which some sort of slip step thing, I can't remember exactly what it was called, was triggered whenever a creature moved into an adjacent square. So if you moved into an adjacent square, bam, the creature could jump uh, almost like Dimension Door yeah. and must end up in melee with another creature. Yeah. And it was so in dim light or is that? No, it was just, the dim light was just for the concealment. Yeah, the dim, the dim light was light. adding to the concealment, but then she could move to a, like she moved to Buggles and then stabbed it. I remember that. Yeah, Brutal. exactly. So it was, it was... Brutal. Yes. I don't really know if I need to summarize this, but at one point during the fight where all these concealment rolls were happening, a concealment roll set off quite an argument. Was it a concealment roll? I believe so. I don't think it was. Oh, I see. I see where you're going with. You're jumping ahead of me, Matthew. Sorry. To moderate this reunion. I like how it's like one couch. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, one other couch, couch. Other couch. I'm in a couch. chair. Now, normally in this seat, normally I am the moderator, you could say, of, of Cat and Fodder. But in this case, I'm going to have to recuse myself from moderating. I was on another side of this debate, and I feel like I need to, I need to honor that. So in order to recuse myself from that role, I have asked Skidmar to act as moderator for this particular uh, uh, reunion. And uh, take it away, Skid. Hello. Doing a little homage to Kate's favorite uh, thing in the world, which is... <laughs> Andy Cohen's reunion shows. <laughs> network. Hi, welcome to the Gatewalkers reunion show. I wanted to get my Nendex card. <laughs> you have magic cards. That yeah. works. That works. Let me so introduce great. you here too. She's been called the pride of the Carolinas, Sydney Emanuel. I'm the craziest player. You don't want to. You don't want. <laughs> Dude, you let got way closer let than I would have got. That was great. Again. That was great. Let me try again. All right, let me try again. Take two. Take two. Okay, ready? I'm going to flip my bottle cap. Always a nat 20. <laughs> <laughs> you had a whole take two. And you <laughs> that was actually you pretty good. Flip a bottle cap like a coin. <laughs> you want to do a take three? I'll do, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do one more. I'll do one more. With math. I never roll higher than a 20 because that's how many are on a die. She's I mean, it. I don't know why we have you to just do more can't than one. be stopped at your awesomeness. It's out of control. <laughs> Everyone is, Go to the gold. next version. Go to the next version. <laughs> you have to have a tagline. And he's no. the only other person in the world that has my criterion.com login information. <laughs> <laughs> it's Matthew Capitacasa. When I roll, there's a number on the die, and that number is up. <laughs> oh, there we go. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know. And her hot new single, Dice Dice Baby, has a debut <laughs> at number 16 overall <laughs> in uh, Canada on iTunes. It's Kate Stamos. You better check your receipts before you check my rolls. <laughs> oh. Oh, shit. <laughs> Joe needs an intro too, though. Okay, and there's Joe. <laughs> uh, so Kate, uh, Chanel in Grand Rapids, Michigan, says that you looked a little upset when <laughs> Troy told you that you had to use your flat check as your first number that you rolled instead of using the two hit, which you intended. How, do you, how did you feel about that? Well, yeah, I was upset. You know why? Because in episode 18, minute 57, <laughs> second 20, what happened? Me. So do I roll the flat check before I roll? Troy. You do whatever you want. It's the 70s, man. <laughs> oh, 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 shit. We love reactions. Listen, I just want to keep it 100. You're just going to bring up old my, shit? 
I rolled my. You're just gonna bring up old shit. I have receipts. Do you have receipts? I rolled my second attack already on Dummy Plane, our lovely sponsor. And did you know that you could roll natural ones on Dummy Plane? Troy, I did. I did. Um, are they still our sponsor? Be, 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 be. Here's the thing: you don't have to roll that flat check anymore. You, Joe. Well, no, that was the flat check. Troy, finger wag. No, 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 no. She was emotionally connected to that being the hit. Please, Joe, let's use a nicely paid for fan fumble. Wow. Wow. Joe, I, do you have any response to that? Being uh that you, know, you were you were intimately involved with this argument here on the side. I can't even believe and that's what's happening. Why are we even having this show? <laughs> that is the that is the I mic mean, drop. That seems... Joe, what's your rebuttal? Uh my my rebuttal. Well <laughs> <sighs> You've always been uh, the stickler for like whenever we do flat checks, you've been like, you gotta roll before, you gotta roll before. It's you true. Always suck. You by say that. it in the transcript. You say it there too. But we've like always flip, messed it up, flopped, flip, flop. Can we just pause for one second to just recognize that Kate has found her medium? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. Really, this is really what she wants to be doing. This, this is my really element. And, but my you only. You guys talk about movies all day. You're in my house. Yeah. This well, is... my only question is, how did you come across that particular piece of evidence? <laughs> was that from listening to Gatewalkers, which I know you've never done once? <laughs> that is a fucking lie, oh, and you prove know it. it. I always am in chat. Give me your Ask phone. Anyone in chat? Give me your phone. I'm always in chat. Ask the niche. I'm always there for the live shows. Yeah, but I'm you're just there. A, you're a just there to chat and have everybody tell you how great you are and be like, "Oh my god, thank you guys so much. Oh my god, thank you guys so much." You're not paying attention. It's not to my the plot. fault that people like me. Oh. And that I have a storyline this season that doesn't revolve around bringing someone else at the table down. Oh, oh <laughs> wow! But so, no, so what I did do was I'm I, sorry you interpret it that way. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry that Joe, you you're way better at this I'm than you thought you were. You're getting it. You're getting it. You're getting also it. finding your medium. <laughs> but what I did do was I went on YouTube and I looked at each transcript for every episode and I controlled F for keywords and I found all the receipts that I needed. There's this transcripts for all the episodes? Yeah, what? You, you, yeah, the, the, uh, the auto-generated caption. caption transcripts. Oh, wow. Okay. That's genius. You know, so, we actually wanted to do that. Breaking character we did, for we a second. Want to, we wanted we to, wanted to like, do that someone for to do like, it, right? yeah, for you Giant Slayer and stuff. You to write yeah. them, but they're auto-generated if you don't. And they're not right. always correct. You would have to Sure, through. sure. But when yeah, like, but, we, but there were times after a couple hundred episodes where you're like, when did that thing happen? Like, I want to go find that thing. And not just for fun either. Like for continuity yeah. or yeah. for like building a tease. Remember we, when we do oh like God, big teases? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I wish we could just like search captioning, but like th those shows weren't on YouTube. So right. like they I didn't build have you that a bot that does that. Perfect. Right? Great. Anyway, back to it. Um, look, well, here's the thing I want to talk about. Okay. Why did you side with. We, we pulled the table when, J when Troy pulled his bullshit ruling. And none of us remembered this being handed down from on high as some kind of fiat. And we all it knew. Wasn't. It was the rule. You coming in with that rule, we know you, Joe. We know you're going to come in with the rule. This isn't an attack on you. We're not attacking you. We're not attacking you. I feel attacked. We're I'm not, not attacking, attacking you. you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not attacking you. So you, you had the, it, you're being crazy. You had the chance to do what was right, and you chose to side with Troy. Who Why? made a bad ruling? Do you think it's easy for me? Do you think it's easy for me? Being out here for Troy, <laughs> of all people, I answer to a higher power. Ugh. The rules. False confidence? All Except, high hold on, hold on, False hold on. Confidence. <laughs> just, mm, just want to take it back to those receipts, though. Oh, which one? You called out the rule, Troy finger wagged you, and you stepped down. You can't just wash over that as if it doesn't don't matter. Interrupt. As if the <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sydney's flipping her hair back and forth. <laughs> doing a lot. I got dizzy and there's my a, head hurt. <laughs> <laughs> For the listening audience, there's a lot of finger pointing. You really gotta watch. I held the sword up at one point. Yeah. You changed the rule on the whim of the GM. So you, you're not you following to make set the standard at a very interesting time. You you always point out the rule, but the GM finger wagged it and you stepped down. The GM flip flopped the rule and you decided it was hard and fast. That That's on it, you. That is the GM's prerogative at any time. I say I answer to a higher power of the rules. I will always question the GM. I have no problem questioning the GM. However, rule number one is that whatever the GM says goes. That's the rule of the game. It's in the book. 
He no. is able to Rule make number one any interpretations whenever he fun. wants. Can have I finish? Fun. Can I finish? <laughs> You're right. Rule number one is have fun. <laughs> <laughs> However, it says it in the book. That is a very subjective thing. <laughs> and from my chair, right there. Troy seemed to be having a lot of fun. Don't push your finger at me. I disagree. <laughs> Troy did. Troy, did. <laughs> Troy seemed like he was pretty embarrassed, actually. He was hiding behind his hat. I think eventually uh, he, he felt bad. I wish he could have been here. He could not be here. He had to be somewhere else. You know, it's not like he could defend himself. It's not like anybody would, would be on his side. Uh, however, I would be interested to know. I would try to, like, get in there and really see, like, if any part of him doubted a little bit. Was you know was like I feel bad. I think so, but I happened. think Troy, Troy has a wonderful quality. I'm going to talk bad about him because he's not here, but I'm also going to talk good about him. Troy has a wonderful quality in being a GM that he will not back down from things, which I respect. Wait, how how is that a wonderful? Which I quality? respect because he's not he's not a pushover GM. Uh, you ever work? You ever play with a GM who's kind of like, oh okay, we'll listen to sure, reason. I no, get, I, no. I, not. I appreciate a GM who is like, this is how I imagined this game. You know, here are my set rules, and I appreciate that. But the thing is, to, he imagined the rules the opposite yes, way, and to, he said that multiple times to an extent. Multiple times, he's like, I like when you roll the flat check after, yep. so that you can be sad yes. when you're. When you're hit, miss. And here's it's definitely more dramatic. <laughs> and here's what I'll talk bad about him. I think he made a bad ruling, but he was too proud to step back away from it. I think that's what it was, too. Well, it's pretty easy to see it that way. However, I wonder if you would do the same thing if the tables were turned. If the turned tables? If the tables turned over. How? Turn the Why tables? Why would you flip the turning? table? How about I flip the table right now and let's see. And I, I want you, can you table. ever be honest? Oh, oh. Me? Ever. You answer to a higher power the rules. You I be honest not. for once in your life, Joe. Two well, then I'll try it out. Before that episode, we messed up every single time we did concealment and nobody cared. And when people corrected it, turns after the fact, Troy said, thank you. And that's it. Well, Let me ask you this. Let me turn after. the tables. Let me turn dem tables. Let's say that natural 20. I'm sorry, not that, that natural 20. Let's say that D20, which... Was your intention, you admit to attack. Uh-huh. You forgot about concealment, right? Totally forgot about it. Uh-huh. That D20 roll is not a natural 20. It is a six. What? And you know it's a miss. It's a six. So it doesn't matter. So it doesn't come up as a 20. It comes up as a six. You know it's a miss. You then remember I that there's concealment. I literally just presented a receipt that said, I rolled a natural one on my... I rolled my attack. That's different. And it was supposed to be the the flat check, and we went with that anyway. So I've already lived your hypothetical. She already did. She lived the worst of your hypothetical. <laughs> it was even worse than Troy. Yeah, it was a nat uh, one. Janine in Fort Myers says, "Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah." Thank you, Janine. Yeah, thank, thank you, Janine. I, if I you remembered it, that it was supposed to be the flat check, she has. You the would not. You're saying you would not go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's the flat check. But if she I failed, she literally didn't. You Joe, did, Joe. But you, what you're saying doesn't make any sense. If she failed the flat check, she doesn't hit anyway. That was that's that's a success on the flat check. No, I'm and saying if she roll if she rolled a one in the. I'm not. A one is an extreme example. I'm talking about if you know it's a miss as an attack, but you know it's a success as a flat check. Are you going to honestly tell me you're going to sit there and say you rolled it? Then remember that you had to do concealment. You wouldn't go. Wait a minute, that's the concealment roll. And I pass it, so How now I'll do my to attack. How hypotheticals when, like, come on. I've already had the worst version of this happen with the natural one, and we saw what I did in the moment. And that was, I didn't, I was tried to keep it 100 by saying, hey, I intended for this to be my role, not the concealment check. What do we do? Mm -hmm. and, and Troy you said, use it as concealment, and Troy said, fan fumble, and then we went through with that, and well, I then really why are you protest. giving? Well, why are you giving me shit? Because clearly, on that example, I was on your side. I was yeah. arguing yeah. for the We're players. Saying, I know. We're saying you always follow the rules. And right. again, this is not an attack on you. Yeah. <laughs> I am not trying to attack you. We're not attacking you. We're trying to help you. And uh, Callie in New Brunswick points out that you are sitting in Troy's seat right now. Oh. The hot seat. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. In the history of the podcast, I cannot recall a moment where someone rolled a D20 and their intention was to roll a two hit. And that, that D20 was taken by the GM to say, nope, that is not what you rolled. It is something else. I can't recall an, an occasion. Joe says he can. I, I, we can believe him. We can believe him. I don't see any receipts I with play, Joe. I play a lot of games. In oh. fact, some of our most- How convenient. Dramatic, and 
we always forget. <laughs> Troy forgets flat checks. We forget flat checks. We always oh, forgot. In one in first edition, we forgot concealment checks all the time. Yeah, it was and the, we, we the kept deciding each other to set the rule at that point to be like, no. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Let's change all it up. All of the sudden. Okay. Let's move on, okay? Let's change it up. Okay. I think that's Andy Cohen's job. Well, uh, Keith in Kalispell, Montana, points out that <laughs> you're being a real Tom Sandoval right now. <gasps> Oh. So let's move on. Let's move on to the next segment. Means, I don't even gosh. have to like listen to this right now. I can't even. That can't is so ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> let's another, move on. Wait, I have, well, I have one more And with another you, thing. With you in particular. I think I know why you sided with Troy. Oh. Moment one. You just don't like the way other players roll dice. <gasps> you mean you mean the physical motion of how they roll it? Yes. <laughs> You're right. Low. You're right. You all disappoint me. <laughs> with the physical way in which you roll dice. That's you petty. don't give it enough drama. That's you just kind so of like you just kind of petty. limply like uh, I had the most I am controversial. <laughs> I just rolled a natural oh, one on Troy's dice. What dad. do you mean I was touching okay. his dice? All is forgiven. All is forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's move it on a little bit. Okay. <sighs> this is hard, but you gotta try to take it out. Of your butt hurt feelings. So you do and too. Missing your natural 20. You don't need to talk to me like that. Think. <laughs> I don't have to take this. I don't like the way you're talking to, to people at this, this table. <laughs> think about. Andy, get in there. You're all really good at this. <laughs> think about the show. Mm. What was better for the show and engagement, which ultimately is what we are looking for with our audience. We want them involved. We want them to be part of it. So you're fabricating drama or engagement? <gasps> fabricating? That seemed pretty real to me. Was this fabricated drama? Did you play me? I believe, I'm, I'm not my speaking. My emotions I am not riled up. Freaking fiddle. Beep, 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 beep. I like am not speaking for too, Troy. You're being I really genuine set up. in your position there. And she got very upset. Are you saying that you you did this all for the cameras? I. <laughs> you did I, this for the clout? You're also really good. At this. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched a lot of these fucking things, man. <laughs> I know. I haven't realized how many I watched too over yeah. the years. I like, only know. So many down, you know how to do I only wish we had the time to do the confessionals where it just cuts to a close up of Joe and Joe just goes, I hate them so much. Yeah, and then it just exactly cuts where I'm back. Like, you know I love playing with you guys. And then it just purpose. cuts to me being like, and you're so full of shit. Know. <laughs> Kate is so two-faced. <laughs> so it comes back to you giving her a hug. Yeah, yeah we're good. exactly. We're good. I'm sorry. Um, I don't I wanna I don't want to say manufactured. No, not at all. But I, and I don't want to speak for Troy, but I've played with Troy a very long time. I've been friends with him a very long time. I know the way that he operates, and I felt in that moment it was he seized an opportunity. His instinct told him there was an opportunity there to create intense drama. And he went with it. I kind of felt like I had to because of my constant harping that the flat check always needed to be first and that I wanted him to play the game that way because I have some receipts. Oh, uh, oh. No, you're being such a Porsche right now. You're throwing him under the bus. I've never seen anyone be more of a Porsche. <laughs> I agree. You look like a real car right now. You told me that. What? Who's Porsche? Porsche Williams from the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Yeah, come I on, I know Matt. exactly what you mean. Come on, Matt. Yeah, go on. Come on. Page 434 Page of the player... Core. Say again. Page, Page four. 434 of the player core. Everyone crack yours open right now. Quote, when you target a creature that is concealed from you, you must attempt a DC5 flat check before you roll to determine your effect. If you fail, you don't affect the target. I understand that that's the rule. Yes, and, and, and I don't think we're really debating that. I I'm was, saying that I, was I have been on episode, that. I will be honest. I was like, where is that written? Where is that written? You I did admit, say that. I did say it. But, but only because every time we've done it before, we have flip-flopped. And we have let people roll it after the fact with no, no problem. And sometimes. Always. And, and sometimes you know who does that? Roy. You know who does that? Every table of Pathfinder <laughs> everywhere. Right. Yeah. So they you could have let me they do forget. it that one last time when it was a nat 20. Yeah. He and then be like, you, from here on out. He couldn't let and you do it because- And then you would have had the nat 20 with her. Yeah, I also, yeah. He couldn't let you do it because he's not here to make friends with you, Kate. He's I'm not here, here to make friends either. He is trying to make a product. <laughs> 
He's a businessman. He's a businessman. He's trying to run a business. This is a show. Businessman first, <laughs> second. I can't. I did, if this is how it's going to be, I'm not, not doing this. Right, you don't know what it's like to run a business. All right, we're going to take five. We're going to take five. <laughs> <laughs> I need to take a break. And then, I need to and take then take pretend, break. I need to pretend we took a break and then we all come back and we're all like this. Yeah. <laughs> I never got to say roll the roll the clip, Francis. Oh, oh. Yeah. say it now. Say it now. Francis, roll the clip, Francis. Francis says there's no you, there's no clip. Yeah. He have a clip. Francis, Francis says just says I, I don't have a clip. <laughs> Play it back. I think, I think, and I'm not trying to attack you. I think <laughs> we have come to the conclusion that it is no one's fault at this table. No, the temp- one person <laughs> that really we should be directing our anger at went home early. Yeah. Yes. So. And yes. I'd love to hear from the folks at home who are watching I right now. I do think that Troy used you too. Yeah, I think, I think he yeah. did. the pawn in his game. I think he used Joe. you. Yeah. Really? I do. I think, exactly need to, make, I think make, you need to think about who your friends are. How does that make you feel? Yeah, because who's there to back you up? The players. And look around this table. He'll turn on you the second that he gets the chance. That's us, Joe. <laughs> he loves me. No. No. That's... Hey, he this, loves his business. He wouldn't do that. You have a lot of friends sitting around here. I can, I'm, I'm sensing that there's a lot of support here in this room. Yeah. And you're and not. Joe, I understand. You look to, you put your faith in the rules. Sometimes people don't want the rules. Yeah. What do you feel? I bet that makes you feel really, 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 you know, betrayed. I think I'd prefer to play with robots. That don't have any feelings. I would love that. And never role play. <laughs> okay. And simply move that from really, encounter to encounter. That is a lie. You <laughs> love to role play when you get the opportunity. I sure do. I sure do. Anyway, I do also think that I need to say that um, Joe is my friend. So everyone on the internet, please back off. <laughs> really mean comments. That's my friend. Um, it was very heated and I was very mad, but it also is a show and it's a game and we're friends. Also, so if like, you're telling me- you cool it? If you're telling me that your TTRPG table has never gotten into a minutia argument like that, you're lying. Yeah, that a was tiff over so things real. that don't matter. Yeah, like you're lying. That happens <clears throat> all the time. And it, it's very drama filled and it's very- Fun and frustrating. And I think it was fun and frustrating. And now we're like, now there's a set rule. Now we got a new rule at the table. I will also say that I think Troy, um, I, I have definitely struggled with this. I continue to struggle with, with it. And I I hate to say I always will. I, I'd like to think I can get better, but I, I, I probably won't. Um, Troy does have a, a pretty good sense of when he can pull the rug out from under you from behind the screen when he knows you're not going to die. Yeah. Mm. He, he, he has a good sense of like, we feel harried. We feel we can't even hit this enemy. Our frustration is building. You know, it's, there's a, there's a gathering storm happening when that natural 20 hits. And so to pull the rug out at that moment feels like such a betrayal. And it's so frustrating, enormously frustrating when you don't know the end, Yeah, you know, and it's not that he crafts the end. It's just that and he's told me this multiple times. He's like, you get so negative about what's happening in a combat and w- w- like decisions I'm making that are putting hardships on you. And you have to, every once in a while, be like, maybe Troy's knows how many hit points this thing has. Or maybe Troy knows what its two hit is and it's not going to blah, whatever. And I'm just building drama in any way that I can. I'm not saying that's the case here. He didn't say that to me about this situation at all. Uh, I do find it interesting that he found that he took this moment, you know, to take the hard stance. It was a shitty, shitty moment to do it, but it was also an explosive moment to do it. And it caused, you know, a lot of drama. And uh, I, I didn't read the comments. I, I wouldn't read the comments because I had no question what the comments would be. There was no doubt in my mind. I wasn't wondering like, I wonder if there'll be somebody on my side. Like, <laughs> there, uh, there was no question. Uh, One Joe head out there like, hey guys, stop. But I did Leave hear like Grapevine was, there were some people that were like, I will never listen to this network again because of this moment. Some people, now maybe some that people was just, handle the maybe that was just a flash in the pan and they'll come back I eventually. Hope so. Yeah, I don't, I certainly don't want to make a show that makes people uncomfortable. I can't stand like, like these reality shows, I don't know. I go back and forth between like, I love watching this train wreck. And like, oh, yeah. I'm actually uncomfortable. There's a fine line the anger. The garbage. Like yeah. I'm below deck. It just gets too much, I, too dark, too real. When people <laughs> actually start fighting, I, yeah. I tend to leave the room. Yeah. yeah. The drama- I have watched Skid. Uh, we were in the middle of dinner once. And uh, I'm not going to name names. Certain people at the table said 
some things that were controversial. And some of the people at the table took the bait. And I watched Skid just drop his pizza and leave the restaurant. I just uh, <laughs> went for a walk. Which was the wise, which was a wise decision. I don't, but it's true. I don't like it. Drama can be fun and silly, but then when it gets a little too real or people start getting very actually upset, yeah. it gets immediately unfun. You know, yeah, like fake and, arguments are hilarious and funny. Yeah. When it starts to feel like it's real, but that's what well, that's when I so get I, I understand from the viewer's standpoint, like, oh, this is hard to watch. It was a tricky combat. We're all friends. Yeah. No, nobody hates each other. Yeah. It was a it was an enormously frustrating comment. Yeah. Uh, uh, combat. And well, to also lift the veil, like that episode and the two before it, we recorded all on the same day. So it was, it was just long. like it was a long me day. Sucking for like for six so, yeah. hours. Yeah, right. And then like that happened and I was like, Oh God. And the other yeah. thing I that, I mean that affected my reaction as well. Cause like I'm I'm I think I'm that's also why you, we were like, so I know like how frustrated you must be. And it's just like give her one win. Yeah. Because you know, she's gone through this, but I also think there's a, Troy tends to, he wants to play all the combats by the book. I agree, like, I agree. He has a pretty good sense of like, okay, no one's going to die. I can antagonize him a little bit and yeah. amp up the story. But I think in that one in particular, it was an especially frustrating combat. We were all rolling terribly. And by the time we hit Kate's natural 20, that wasn't a natural 20, that got called back, like, we were frustrated. Yeah. Like, the room was frustrated. And like, the table needed a whim. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that was, the, like, that, that was, was that was the main thing. thing. Yeah. That was the main thing. We all were rolling very badly. Now, and Troy has crazy. nothing to do with this. Totally. Troy did not craft this at all. But it made the next natural 20 the biggest oh, natural yeah. 20. Oh, yeah. No, it, it worked out. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. But we could have been, we could have been seeing, doing that combat for another 30 minutes. For yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. But whole, can we just, let's turn positive for a second. Holy shit. Oh, no. It, it's it the best out. natural 20 of Gatewalkers thus far. No yeah. question. It's going to be hard to top. Oh, that, yeah. that was. An you, incredible moment. You ran around. The you know, you I would do that. I would do that from time to time in Giant Slayer. Yeah, yeah. You ran. <laughs> yeah, he. I would do that from time to time in Giant Slayer, but it would have to be a pretty damn big moment. It, you know, if we did 300 episodes, we probably did it 10 times, right? Like it, it didn't happen that often. Uh, first time in Gatewalkers, and in and in this. There's a lot more work to it. You have to unplug yourself <laughs> yeah. in order to like, do it. And I was like, it's yeah. worth it. <laughs> yeah. That natural twenty was so. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Such relief. Yeah. <laughs> Not because we were gonna live, just like that we had finally done it. That's yeah. just like, yeah, like the like the heat broke in the room. Yes. Like oh yeah. finally it's raining a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's, yes. it feels better. Totally. It was great. It was great drama and an an enhanced moment of triumph at the end. Yeah. I'm going to tell a very, very quick story here. I feel like it's warranted because it's just funny. And I don't know if you know it. You may not. I'm almost certain, Kate, that you do not know it. Um, early in my Pathfinder days, I ran a game for Skid and some friends of mine, uh, Nick Lowe included. And uh, I don't think Nick was in the game at this point. Uh, he might not have been in the game. But uh, these were some friends. He wasn't. I don't was really not, need to get into who they all were. One of them in particular was a, a client of mine and a Buddy, yeah, he was he was a, a good friend, but he was also like me, wired like Skid, uh, like an Irishman, and with a short fuse and a hot temper, and he was also objectively a little bit of a pain in the ass as a player, with nickel and diming me a lot. So this, we I've been running a game for years at this point, and we're at a bodega, and he gets down nickel and dimes me about, and this fight was not about uh, a twenty or concealment. This fight was about cover. Wait, you're in a bodega arguing about the game. We're in a bodega yeah. playing. No, we're playing in the bodega. Oh. There was a bodega where we would play every week. Okay. Okay. Like nobody had like a table that yeah. you could play on in apartments in New York. And uh, this bodega was friendly specifically to role playing <laughs> games. Hilarious. Yeah. It was awesome. It was there, on, there would often be like two or three games going on. Yeah. Oh, that's it was awesome. like Fifth so Avenue cool. and 30th Street. Like, right yeah. Yeah. Snacks. Yeah. 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 We'd and go, beers. go buy beers. Yeah. Yeah. As long as we were like buying beers and food, like they were cool they with were, us being up yeah. there for hours. So we, we'd play up there. So one time it was about cover. He was just kind of like kind of around a corner. And I was like, your attack is, you know, the enemy's going to get a bonus to the AC. He's arguing about how he could reach around a corner, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And I was drinking and he was drinking. And I was like, I'm, I'm dying on this hill. Like I am not backing off of this. Like he has cover, do it or whatever. And uh, he was like, you're you know, like a megalomaniacal asshole and you just like trying to like, uh, you do this and you do that and you, f you f uh, fudge your roles and you're full of shit and all this stuff. And I was just like, I 
pushed my seat back and like all of my, like saw red, like all of my shit just went blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, you know what? Everybody is sick of your bullshit around the table. Everybody's tired of listening to you bitch about every little thing about the game. And I did that and I put it like oh, right, oh, in, his face. right in his no. face and he jumps up from the table and this guy is ripped and he jacked me like hard. <laughs> oh and God. I went back like, like five, six feet yeah, and I like, like caught my feet. And was like stunned at how hard right? he hit me and yeah. that he did that. And it kind of shook me out of it, yeah. you know, like yeah. like Boromir. Like I was kind of like, holy shit. And there's other games around oh playing. My God. Just looking like this. Skid looked like a deer in headlights. I know. Because I'm sitting like, between, I'm like watching it from the middle. So I'm like. I'm, you like the tennis court? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm sitting, I'm sitting at, at, at center net. court. Yeah. It was, I, it was a bad situation. And I. Like everybody's looking at me, I'm like, I'm, I know I'm in a public place. I immediately get my, you know, head under control and I just like, I calm down. You know, he starts to calm down. We like, I, we finish the game. I don't really remember the next little bit because I was so like out of whack. But it left. But it was definitely late in the night. And then, uh, and then the next day, like he's a friend of mine. And the next day I called him. Uh, and he was like, holy shit, I'm so sorry. And I was like, I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. Like, I just, I got fired up. I was frustrated, blah, blah, whatever. And he's like, no, I shouldn't have done it. It was ridiculous, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, I tell you what, like, I can't stop seeing it, pushing you over and over again. He's like, I don't care about pushing you. He's like, I've pushed or hit every one of my close friends. Like, that means you're a friend. He's like, what I care about is Skid. Yeah. Because he great. had only met him, like, oh. a year before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he knew how sweet, like, Skid was. He was like, I feel awful about doing that in front of Skid. Like yeah. I could see it in his face, blah, blah, So anyway, it God. like, yeah. and we ended up playing that game for like another I know, year we still for another three, and then, and then Nick joined and then everything. It was yeah. a great game. And we never like, fought again, but he like. Again. He played in your short lived, very short lived, but the uh, Curse of the Crimson. Curse of the yeah, Crimson he was, game. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He played in that, yeah, right. yeah. That's uh, the mark of a gaming table. Like you Right, it happens. And what I'm yeah. saying is that was way more yeah, violent yeah, than what Maybe not assault. Maybe not assault. Let's not hit each other. I think, we were all frustrated for sure. Yeah. But like you know, the we it was a frustrating company. We were working the problem, right? Yeah. Right. We didn't have enough information. Kate figured it out, but we were like, we were trying to get. We were get, failing recall we, knowledge uh, left and right. Yeah. And well, yeah. I succeeded at first. I just wasn't given the right information. Yeah. Yeah. So that was I another didn't ask a question. That was I, another thing. And then with the hole and oh, falling in the yeah. hole. Mm -hmm. We talked about like <laughs> maybe the intui, the better move is to recall knowledge after you see them do something. Like yeah. Like we just yes. another. What is so, that? Yeah. What did that? What just happened? Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was just very frustrating. We were working the problem, but it just was, it was slow going. Difficult. Yeah. So yeah. agreed. It was a slog. I don't think it, it was, was a slog. Didn't get to actual. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys for sitting down, hashing it out, having a little reunion. Skid, thank you for mo mo uh, moderating. Yeah. Uh, no and great pull on the receipt. That was yeah. good. That was good. It made me really wish Troy was here. I know. Yeah. He would have gotten a kick out of that. <gasps> he would have gotten a kick out of that. And he won't listen. He's like, he I'm, not, I'm not going up. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I'm not going up against another Virgo. She's going to have her wrist. That, walk out music. That is so, that is so awesome. Uh, okay, let's get into a couple We Are Stupids, a little listener mail, and then we'll get out of here. Uh, I don't know if you guys, oh, Jesus, my thing's being weird. I don't know if you've heard this one, but let's see. We are stupid. No. <laughs> Nice. Very good. Very New good. one from Nick. It's only a couple weeks old. Um, okay, so the Onyx Dog. Just, I mean, we're not going to use it for four more months of yeah. gameplay because it, it, it's once a, once week. a week. But um, this is from Professor Eric. Thank you, Professor Eric. The activation is a two-action command and interact, which means uh. the round you put it out, you have commanded it. So oh. it gets an action ah. on the round it comes out, similar to how summons work. Okay. And summons have three actions to summon, but they then have an yep. action on their turn. So it is this thing, uh, even though it's only two actions, but it's much less powerful than your average summon. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it is a command and interact. So that's a good point out from, from Professor cool. Eric. I Thank you. guarantee I won't remember. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so, oh, this was interesting. I was curious if Zephyr's standing up could have triggered the Shay's movement for a maximum FU from Troy. Um, uh, but the trigger was fairly narrow and Troy didn't expand its definition. So we said here that the definition was when a creature moves into an adjacent space, could moving up from prone mean moving into an adjacent space? Let us know in the comments. It's an interesting conversation. It wasn't moving an in versus reaction. moving into. 
It yeah. Was, yeah. He could decide when to use it. It's not like it was an uncontrolled reaction. That's true. He could have chosen not he to chose use it. He chose to or, like multiple times. Yeah. To not yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Because like whoever yeah. was moving up didn't That's a good him semantics or point though. Skid, yeah. Skid said move into a space or move in a space, you know? If that's the actual text of the trigger, then I would say no. Yeah. It's already in that space. I would also say. Threatening. From yeah. Right. I would well, say let us know what you think in the comments. I, I think that there could be some debate there, but I, I, I'm with you, Matthew. All right. So how about, uh, let's go into the hot topic again from Professor Eric's perspective. Of course, he quotes the player core, but then he says, the other reason he likes to try to remember and always force players to do the flat check first is multi-layered. The primary thing being hero points and the use of hero points, which is something uh, that I had not thought of. Oh. He was like, you can use a hero point or a bottle cap. You can use a bottle cap on a flat check. And he's, it's important to determine, like, you don't want to do ha have that lingering out there by not knowing what the intention of the role was and have it like pretty standard that it's always first. So that if you decide to bottle cap it, you know when that's happening. And this is why he says he dislikes the common speed it up a strategy of roll both die with oh, one die, you that. know, being the attack, one die, you know, being the flat check. I usually love doing oh, that. Oh, I hate that. But th thing. This is an interesting I idea as to why to not do it yeah. because it, you, you, using the bottle cap is then like you pick which die you want to use it on. That's not really kosher. You know you don't hit, so work. why would you use it on the concealment? Right, yeah. right, exactly. So it, it, it added an interesting layer in there. Uh, and then I just want to quote this. However, concealment check is probably the most overlooked, retroactively needed role I've seen in all of my PF2 games. No matter how good you are about trying to enforce it, I think having some grace here is important. I typically will allow the retroactive flat check, but will disallow any hero points on a retroactive flat check. That's fair. That's fair. Because you already know you hit, right? And we well, are, thanks, we Professor know, Eric. We know hey. we don't have any hero points. To, yeah, we, to, yeah, yeah, we have we, none anyway, so. That's yeah, it. I don't get We don't cap. play by hero points. We play by <laughs> Troy's bottle cap rules. <laughs> he also confirms that the deviant ability goes off before the, yes. the before the backlash happens, even if you get a backlash. We keep rolling the backlash first. Immediately. Which we're supposed to do. Right. Uh, oh, but So you roll it first, you do your ability, and then... Yep, and the it backlash. never interrupts the ability. It's not taking away. But then after it, you will get the backlash. It says, whenever you attempt to use a deviation, roll a DC5 flat check. There's another layer in here, which... Uh, sorry, I'm having trouble reading like quickly, but uh, about the, uh, the hot topic, which was that... Um, the uh, 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 a lot of creatures be uh, they have abilities that are triggered when they are targeted. So whether that's a reaction or usually a reaction, if you target that creature, you roll that flat check. That is effectively targeting the creature. So it's also important to realize that like even if you miss on the flat check, you could trigger their reaction. It's not like your attack never happened. It's like you started the attack. The flat check is the first part of that attack. So an interesting thing to keep in mind for when you get really granular uh, with the rules. And then... Um, yeah, and then lastly, he just says, and I'll say the Shay's multiple teleports were run correctly. I saw some of the community puzzled, but since uh, you didn't ID it and Troy didn't explain it, I won't say more here about how it works, but we all know Troy told us after the fact how it all works. But he ran it correctly. Okay. So good to know. Uh, all right, let's get a couple questions from you guys in, and then we're going to bounce <laughs> out of here. <laughs> oh, Nick again with the listener <laughs> mail. It's time to listen to me. Nice, Sid. That's kind of what we did today. We did question that fucking answer. Yeah, we did. Yeah, you did. All right. Andrew, you from Roseville, uh, Minnesota. I just had to shout you out, uh, Andrew. He said, the real question everyone wants answered is, if Kate had rolled a six on the roll, she intended to be her attack, which would be a miss, but a success on the flat check, would Troy have stepped in? And had that be the role for the flat check, or just let the role count as a I miss? Think I answered. He's not here questions. to. He's not here to answer for himself, but you've already receipts. answered. You're a very yeah, honest person. Yeah. Quick one from Jed in Ontario. Hi, hey Can guys, we... I hope you had a good time at the Toronto show, as did we. Just wondering if you liked having the VIP meet and greet before the show. Oh yes. I felt yes. a little rushed. Yes. Blah blah blah, because it was so tightly yeah. timed. Uh, I didn't get to say hi to Sydney. Oh hey. Who uh, Jed loves, but just. Uh, but though she was kind enough to give me a signature, love you guys and love my new Joe Dice. <laughs> oh, I mean, nice. I'm so nice. Glad like you got it, the Joe Dice. Maybe it doesn't seem like it after the show, but we do have a tight timeline after the show also because yeah. we have 
have a, a time we need to be out. Yes. Yeah, the venue has an the venue has a So thank you, Kev. Kev has to go. That's yeah, exactly what I was going to say. We end up doing the same amount of time. Yeah, yeah. Basically. It is the same amount of time. This is you, you say. <laughs> right. I, will, I will say, we all felt like we had so much more energy to give to everyone yeah. because we're not exhausted from the day and then a show. And burnt mentally fried. Yeah, yep. like it's so it's hard late. after a show. You know how it is. You play a game and it's like all of my thinking goes to math. Yeah, and then I can't <laughs> talk after that. And then we right. go backstage really quick. Then you're and be bad like, at math and face. talking. I'm right. bad at math and talking, and usually I'm good at talking. Uh, but no, I liked it so much more, and everyone was so nice at the Toronto show right. too. I'm sorry that I didn't get to say hi to you, Jed. Hello, hello now. And which uh, I think to pull back the curtain a little bit, it would, we would norm what we would do before is we would do sound check, and then we would all go back to the back to the green room, and then sit for a long time and like worry. Hours and sometimes. Troy would Troy would pan work himself up into a panic. We'd be kind of just sitting there trying to entertain ourselves and you know sometimes those green rooms aren't particularly comfortable <laughs> so you're like we're not able to actually or we over, or overthink a game. combat that's coming up we just like yeah. stew with our thoughts or people are on their phones or on their it's so this way we actually made really good use of the time by getting to, to put that energy towards meeting people. and it was nice yeah and it was nice meeting a lot of the people before the show like yes. you need to know some of the faces that you're going to be we looking got to at roll while some dice. Performing. yeah yeah I got people, to roll dice when they get to shout them out during yeah, the show. That yeah, people gave me it was really. It cool. was it was no exaggeration. A million times better than doing it after. Yeah, and then like I agree with on you. the tours where we do two cities in like one weekend, like we're not leaving the venue super late and then showing up to the next show like extra tired. Yeah, we're not like trying to quickly stuff our face with pizza in like five minutes before after the show before going back out and then like burping pizza in your face. Right. <laughs> yeah. That is like, it's just, I feel that really it's is. Better. I have burped some pizza. <laughs> oh, some people, for sure. That's just, for just sure. rude. All right. This is, we're going to get out of here on this one, but it's not a fast one. This is a good question. I saved it for last. I'd like to love to pose this to you guys. In fact, I'm excited that it's not just Troy and I this time. I'd love to hear what you have to say. A uh, suburbanite from Burlington, Virginia, who is on Twitch. Oh yeah. Uh, you, no you suburbanite. Know, suburbanite. Thank you so much for watching on Twitch. We appreciate it so much. Troy once referred to Bleak Prospect, the new game who dis Call of Cthulhu game that yeah. we did, as his favorite scenario he's ever read in an RPG. Now that a few more years have passed, do you, Troy or Joe, now you guys are all here, which is great, have any updated thoughts on your favorite adventure scenarios, regardless of a RPG system? So we're not talking about system, we're talking about scenario or AP, adventure, uh, any system, it's you know kind of a big question, but uh, I'm curious if any of you have an answer top of mind. Uh, Matthew, yeah? Uh, I'm trying to remember the actual title of, you know, Troy doesn't tell us the titles of the uh, modules we run, but the mo first module we ran for Side Quest Side Session. What was it called? Oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, oh, for uh, God's sake. The one with the town, called? the village, the we're, we're Raven, Raven's Feast Raven's of Ravenmore. Feast, Feast of Ravenmore, Ravenmore yeah. was maybe my favorite module. That was really Actually, good. that's a really good answer. That's a good answer. That's a really good answer. I had forgotten about that, that one. Oh, man, that was so good. Uh, a creepy sort of uh, deliverance meets like creepy horror dinner kind of like vibe uh, with twists, big twists. Big twists. Yeah. yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was like deliverance meets Wicker Man. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Wicker yes. Yeah. There, there it is. Summed it up. Uh, do you have one, Sid? I have one. I, I tend to, to really enjoy listening to, I listen to other like TTRPGs and I really enjoy silly things like set in a fantasy high school, like very silly stuff. Although I love playing dark things. So it's kind of the juxtaposition, but there was a one shot that my friend ran for Delta Green and it was a blend of silly and dark because it was Delta Green, but it was basically everybody got a character assigned to them and one person was a normal guy <laughs> and everyone else was some sort of like supernatural, unknown to the other players, <laughs> was some sort of like alien supernatural creature who had these like messed up things. And everyone's goal was to get this one object and like bring it back to your home planet. But we all thought we were Delta Green agents on the same mission and we were all human. So oh, we all you think like everyone else is you human. You think everyone else is human. Exactly. And you think you're the one alien. So right. like we were doing this whole thing. We were like in the New York Public Library. We had to like go to the next door. Somebody was at a diner, like classic Delta Green, just everyone's doing whatever. And then suddenly it started to be like, I pick you up and I put you in my pocket. And everyone was like, what? What? Pardon I'm, me? I'm, I'm sorry. What? And it and and the DM was just like, okay. So he picks you up and he puts you in your pocket. What do you do? And everyone's like, what is going on? <laughs> and like everyone started using their abilities and like flying. It was just chaos at the end, but it was a lot of fun. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Kate, do you have any ideas? Honestly, um, playing Masks of Nyarlathotep 
mm. really fun. I mean, like the people that I I hear with it's the greatest adventure awesome. ever written. It's so greatest. good. But, like it's so fun. Like we're on the second book right now, I think, and like like we're traveling around the world essentially. I think we're going to end up doing that, which is like nuts. The if mysteries you, if are you live. right. <laughs> the mysteries are fun. Um, there are some things that we do that are very like monster of the week. Don't really have much to do with like the overall arc of everything, but like are just this encapsulated like just weird thing that goes on. Um, yeah, it's just fun. Yeah, I, that's great. that's a really hard answer to top. Like, like I'm playing chunky. Masks of Neralethotep, which is it's like chunky the most combat, famous. But it's still like easy to play in the moment. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's so enjoyable to listen to. So it's great. It's good. Uh, I always read that. The Delta Green early Delta Green scenario music from a darkened room was mm. supposed to be phenomenal. Yeah. I haven't read it. Or, I haven't read it either. Yeah, for anticipating that we might yeah someday run it, it one day. Yeah, I think my favorite one still that I've ever played in was the Scourge of the Slave Lords uh, Mega Module uh, from TSR that I played uh, with my buddies back in middle school. Mm. Yeah, I mean that's got to hold a special place. Oh yeah, it's great. What's like the basic? Pr is a D and D. AD and D, yeah, it's AD and D, and it's, it's actually shit on a lot by a lot of the ground yards that people like looking back. But I, I love it. But what, one of the things that the early things that happens is that your your group, your party is is uh, taken prisoner by slavers, and all of your equipment, like everything, is taken from you, and you sort of you have to figure out uh, what to do uh, with with none of your stuff. Mm. And uh, I just like, I was running it and it was just like, I just loved like the look on my friend's faces and they're like, <laughs> like you don't have your sword or your <laughs> stupid hat. You don't really have like any of that stuff. It's gone. You know, it's oh, great. that's great. That's great. Um, as usual, I can't, I can't, I can't just have one answer. That'd be ridiculous. Um, but uh, so I'm going to do a Pathfinder and a Delta Green. Uh, Pathfinder for me, you, you might know this is, uh, it always just stands out for me. It's a Pathfinder Society scenario very early on. It's like season two or three or something like that. And it's Citadel of Flame, which you have both played in yep. that I've run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've run it like five times. I've never run anything that many times. I just feel like it's such a cool scenario. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's essentially, and I love the setup. The setup is just like a Pathfinder, a high level Pathfinder Society wizard is just flying over K the Kadiran Desert, just like flying. I think it's Kadira or near Kadira, just flying. Because uh, like, that's how that wizard would get around, you know? <laughs> and just going from like one place to the next. And during that flight, notices some sort of unearthed like fortress that has been revealed by the blowing sands. And so they send out an investigative team. Oh, we team. played this up at the Cape, right? Didn't we play this up at the, the Cape Cod? No, that was that an was updated a different one. D, D like old school D&D &D scenario that Joe updated. Oh. oh. Yeah, that was a slightly different one, but. Uh, I want to play this one though. But, oh, I, I'd love to run it for you one day. And I, I, I won't say anything, uh, anything, uh, what's that? We run it on, on tour. tour. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, fuck that. I'm like, <laughs> like, we have to make content out of it. <laughs> content, content, content. content. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I just feel like, um, yeah, anyway, I, I won't say any more, but it's really cool because you basically go to these like, you know, distant, distant sands, it. sort of, you have to go out for camels for days to like get there. Wow. And then you're, it's a race with like other people to like uncover with them. What is this ancient building that has been revealed by just millennia of blowing sand. I think I played it, but not with you. What? I think I played it with like a, in a PFS uh, scenario. Should, oh, really? You setting. should play yeah. it. Holy shit. Here's uh, a module. I No, you. I'm sorry. You definitely played it because I ran it at your house with Troy. Troy was there. He played oh. in it. That's where he made the solution. Remember, he like whipped up a character <laughs> named the solution. Oh, oh. It was like a, 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 okay, yeah, a yeah. fighter. Oh, God, it was so funny. <laughs> Here's a module I did not play in, but had heard stories about the, the game, and, and it might be my favorite thing I've never played, so which is the one that you ran, I, at least for Joe, but maybe Troy also, Pathfinder, Pathfinder Society scenario, where you are transporting like three goblin prisoners. Oh yeah, it's the a fro frost for the frost captives. for captives. That's it's a it. famous yes. one. Yes, and it was like just hearing the stories of how it went was so delightful. <laughs> yeah, you need skid to run it really, or a skid level person because to play every goblin, <laughs> you know, to run every yeah. goblin, it's just amazing. Like you, you, the whole scenario is essentially you have to transport goblins like oh. through this thing, 
and they're so chaotic and they get all it's like trying to shuttle kids from one place yeah, to another it's like the hundred baby challenge psychotic yeah. children it's like, I get it yeah, yeah and Skid did an amazing job of making you feel so real you're like no 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 like, <laughs> oh, like constantly trying to grab and pull them back and then there's fights and like you have to just keep them protected that and like, sounds awesome it's like it was really fun I just remember a fun Skid one. telling a story of like they, you, were, you got into a huge fight and like a bunch of the goblins and they were they were being chaotic and then you finally finished and one of the goblins just goes Breakfast? Yeah, breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> breakfast? <laughs> so awesome. And then uh, I'll mention a, a Delta Green one, uh, which we played, which is um, the first one that I, I ran after New Game Who Dis, which was The Last Equation. Oh, the math oh, one. Yep. The math one. Yep. That was I love. That, that was, was good as fuck. That was yeah. great. I love that, that so scenario. Good. It was the reason it was the first one I ever picked to run on Delta okay. Green. Outs last Things Last is great, too, as an intro scenario. Yeah. Uh, but, like, the idea of it's just a standard – not standard, but it's a terrible multi-murder, but it's a murder investigation in North Jersey. Yep. And you go out there and there's just all these bloody bodies, a clear murderer who's already dead with a shotgun and just a math equation on the ground. And yep. then uncovering what that equation is and why it drove them mad yep. and how unnatural high level math can be. It's such a cool scenario. It is great. It's, really it's, cool. a, it's a great classic kind of horror sci-fi, like big idea that works really <laughs> well. And it's just every, it was, and it was so fun. The show itself, I think was phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Like what we ended up making out of it was great. Got the yeah. news, the news vans in the parking lot, the Man. like beginning of the show yeah. is so funny. Yeah. <laughs> Just the failure immediately. Yeah, yeah. It was just like, I mean, Grant said something as uh, uh, Riker Sala said something along something the about line. about terrorism? Yeah, yeah. He says something like to the reporters. <laughs> he's just like, or he yells at somebody like, don't cover that up. This could be terrorist, blah, 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 whatever. And like the reporter's like, terrorist? Did you say terrorist? And they all start like writing stuff <laughs> and, 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 and he's just like, wait, no, no, wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> And then the news reports are all like terrorist attack <laughs> in North, North Jersey. Jersey. I mean. Keep it low profile says the hander and they're like don't say anything weird right keep it low profile there, I'm getting arrested or something and there's oh, yeah. like people watching it and it's just like isn't that famed sci-fi yeah. author <laughs> Gordy wasn't Arsenault the, that's right the same one where we sh where, where we shot at each other when Grant with Grant's new character yeah Grant shot me yeah well, yeah the mystery All led you the, somewhere uh, which I will not describe oh and, my god uh, you gotta listen yeah. to it I dropped yeah. it no. and, I, I like, and I was like I guess I shoot back yeah <laughs> uh. Yeah, you can't say anymore. It would be it would be a spoiler. You got to you got to check it out. The origin of the phrase "get in the trunk." It yes, is. That's true. It actually is. Yeah, yeah. Grant's character. Yep. Okay. Enough said. <laughs> uh, that's it. That's all I got. Thank you so much, Suburbanite. That was a really fun question. Uh, yeah, because you know, we always get like, "What's your favorite RPG system? What's the favorite new game you played this year, etc." But not like, "What's your favorite adventure or scenario?" So uh, that was awesome. Yeah, that is uh, going to wrap it up. As they say, a any parting words, Kate? Any parting words before we get out of here? Um, I'm just waiting for my invitation to Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. Well, uh, I, I, you did a fantastic job. It was it was awesome. That was you a great, too, that was you a great, great. The hair, great the hair, the hair reunion. throw was fantastic. Skid, thank you again for moderating. Thank you. It was awesome. Uh, See you next thanks season. so much for watching, everybody. Hey. If you're a Vorpal subscriber, come check us out tonight, 7.30 Eastern on Discord. We're going to be hanging out. That's going to be really fun. Uh, Jared and I, maybe Skid's going to pop by. Whoever else wants to pop by, you're welcome. And then, um, yeah, of course, Skatewalkers continues tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, and then Time for Chaos on Friday night. Check out Kate uh, on YouTube as well, YouTube premiere. So that's going to do it for us. Have a fantastic week and weekend, and we'll see you next week on The FOD. Later, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.